So basically this situation is about data set and data loaders. So why do we need data set and data loader and what are the importance of that? So what we are going to discuss today is that and how to load a data set, how to create a custom data set and how to use data loaders. So basically what happens is we always want our data set sample to be separated and decoupled from our training model training code because the code can get very messy. That is why PyTorch has provided us two primitives data set and data loaders. Data set is basically the set of the samples and their corresponding labels and the data loader it will wrap and retrieval around those data sets so that we can easily access those samples. Now these samples can be anything. For example, if you see this is a data set of animal images and there's a car also. So there's a bird, dog, frog. Now if I ask what is the length of the data set, this is 6. I'm indexing to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And what I want is at the fourth index, if I give this, I get a cat. Now I would like to explain this as a help of a toy problem. So if you see this, there are two lists XS and YS. So first just forget what is data set and data loader. It is simple, basically the normal Python functionality. So what is XS and what is YS? I've created two lists and I've generated numbers in the range. So I have 10 values. YS also have 10 values. So I want to make a tuple. I want to couple these values. So I use a zip here. So when I run this and I give data set 0, I get a tuple at X0 and Y0 location. What is the length of data set since I have coupled? So I have the length, length is 10. Now I can put all this functionality together in a class called my data set. Then I will call an init function which will initialize this list. A get item function, this will basically return the items at this particular index which I have defined, and length function will give the number of samples in my data set. So if I call the class my data set pass this x's and y's, and then I call data set 2, so I get a tuple at this location. This is basically I have defined a class. And all this functionality which I wrote separately here, I have kept it in my class in three functions get item, init, and length. Now, what is the data loader? What will happen is once my data set part is done, I want to use this for processing. I want to use the data in batch size, I want to shuffle the data set. So, if you do this and you call a data loader and you pass this in your data set, it will basically convert it into tensors. After that, if I give batch size as 2, I'll get a I'll get tensor 0, 1, 10, 11. Then if I give shuffle equal to 2, this data will get shuffled. This is in but this is a small example, you know, when I'm considering numbers. Now, for example, I want to do this for images. Now, how do you use preloaded data set? So this is basically the preloaded data set. The fashion MNIST. Now, in case of fashion MNIST, what is basically a fashion MNIST? A fashion MNIST is actually a set of 60,000 training samples and 10,000 test samples, and this is basically a group of images. These are grayscale images of size 28 cross 28. So, this is basically when I want to load it. In my root is a basically the location where it will be stored. Train is whether it is a training data or test data, and download whether you want to download it from the internet or not. Now, once the data is downloaded, we want to visualize the data. So we will use the indexing. So I've numbered the labels and then I can index the data and visualize it using the MATLAB plots. Now, this is in case of the preloaded image data set. Now, what if I want to create my own custom data set, which I explained with the help of numbers. Now, this is example using the images. In this case, again, I have defined the three functions. Our init function is always called once. In this one image directory is the location where the images will be stored, the required transformation for the images and then the image label is the one where we will store the label. So these labels are stored in the CSV file. Then length will return the number of samples and data set. In case of get item, basically we will get the sample at the particular index value. So read image will convert into a tensor and then the self dot image label will retrieve the label from the CSV file. Once this part is done, now again we want to do some functionality on the images. So how do you do the functionality on the images? We will use data loader. We want to do multi-processing of the data. We want to give data in mini batches. We want to shuffle the data. So here I have called a data loader and I have passed my training data and test data. 
I given a value sixty four. I have given shuffle equal to true. So if I display this, I get sixty four size. Now this is just a small example which I have taken for the fashion MNIST images and the small numbers. In order to get more details about this, you can refer to this link. This link has many examples regarding that, and you can get back if there is any query.